Hey everyone, it's Diana the Doll Fairy. Welcome back to my channel. Those of you who've been here before would know that one of my favorite video games in the world is Pokemon. Well, when Retro Dolls US hosted a Pokemon themed doll swap a few months back, I could not say no. My partner for this doll swap was Samantha, or Rosie Dream Dolls on Instagram. She's actually Sarah's sister, Sarah Sugarlump Gift Shop. She's her younger sister. And Sarah told me that Samantha loves my channel, so I was so excited to make a doll for her. For this swap, we made Pinterest boards to inspire our partners with images and art that we liked. I looked through Samantha's Pinterest board and was especially inspired by this artwork by Hinaki Yuzu. She looks as if someone transformed an Umbreon into an anime schoolgirl. I didn't recreate this character exactly, but I decided to do something similar, inspired by this artwork. Since she has pale skin that I want to contrast with her black hair, I chose a Raven Queen doll as her base. After removing her face with acetone nail polish remover, and her hair with the aid of boiling water and jewelry pliers, I'm going to start with the reroute. Her head is already painted a dark color, so I didn't have to redo that. That was convenient. For our Umbreon schoolgirl, I'm using this lustrous black monofiber hair from Retro Dolls US, called Oil Spill Monofiber. It actually has a kind of deep midnight blue tone, especially when you hold it in the light, which is really cool and I think it suits Umbreon well. It feels sort of magical or something. Her hair isn't going to be crazy long, so I'm snipping these hanks in half before rooting strands of it into the head using my rerooting tool made from the handle of an X-Acto knife. As I've said before about rerooting, it takes a long time because there are so many plugs, but it's straightforward and kind of relaxing. The hair is a little bit messy, but I made so much more of a mess the times that I made wigs. I like to start with the hairline and then end with the part. It seems I forgot to film that part, but I basically just do two lines of plugs and crisscross them in opposite directions for full coverage on the top part of the head. After I'm done with the reroute, I'll be styling the hair later, but now is the time to do her face up. I'm masking off her hair with a paper towel and some pins, though I do suggest using fabric, the paper towel kept ripping, uh, and then doing two or three initial coats of Mr. Super Clear on the face. Then I start to outline the eyes with a brown pencil. For her expression, I want her to look a little mysterious, so the top line of her eyes I'm making pretty straight and low, like her eyes are kind of half-lidded. Her eyebrows I'm making slightly arched, like she's a little bit sassy. <laughs> At first I had a little trouble with the eyes looking a little bit derpy, so I had to adjust back and forth until it looked right. I also went ahead and started on the eyelashes right away. I'm doing this all in brown and then later I'm going to go over it in black. I also gave her this little birthmark because there was a speck of dust or something there that wasn't going away and it was kind of bothering me. So I thought it'd be cool to make it into a cute beauty mark and I feel like it sort of adds to her, like the personality in her face or something like that. After I'm satisfied with the outline of her facial features, I'm going to do some blushing on her face with soft pastels. I like to scratch them onto some paper to make a little pile of dust to work with, and then I can mix the colors and stuff like that if I want to. Her lips are going to have a gentle natural color, like she doesn't wear lipstick. It kind of goes along with the anime schoolgirl vibe, I think. I tried to put a good amount of shading around her eyelids to make it look more realistic while still kind of anime-ish. Kind of like cell shading, I guess? I'm pretty sure I sealed the face again here and then I go on to the next layer. I'm 
I'm also trying something different this time with the eyes. Usually I mix acrylic paints to create a gradient effect in the eyes. This time I'm going to try to use only colored pencil and see how that works out. I know a lot of people do that, I just have never done it. Uh, I'll probably still use some white paint for the sclera or the white parts of her eyes for more vibrancy, but I'm going ahead with red pencil for her irises, trying to maintain lighter areas on the bottom part of the eye and darker areas at the top underneath the lash line. I color in the pupils with black, and then start outlining the lashes, eyebrows, and eyelids all with black pencil as well. After filling the white part of the eyes with white colored pencil, I sealed again. Then the next layer would just be building up more vibrant color in the eyes, and also with pastels too for blushing. I like the feeling of control you can get with using only colored pencils, and the way that the building up of color is slower, gradual, and more meticulous. It kind of gives you more opportunity to create fine detail than you would generally get when working with paint. It also takes more patience, but I tend to like slow, intricate work. So I would like to try to do more of this in the future where I use mostly colored pencils and a little bit less acrylic paint. I add more shading in the eyes with some browns, and then I also use some black, and I'm careful not to go too overboard with it, but I really wanna create a depth of color. For the whites of the eyes, I also use some gray pencil as well to create shading and depth in those parts of the eyes. Here I'm adding some more pastels. Then some more detail in the eyes. And finally, the highlights in the eyes. That part is so much fun. It looks so pretty, like I don't know why, it just makes a huge difference. It's the, that perfect final touch at the end that makes you feel so satisfied that you completed this work. Okay, so now that her face is done, let's get going on her outfit. I have a standard basic uh, hoodie pattern that I created a while ago and uh, I've been using it for whenever I create a different Pokemon hoodie. I just keep adjusting it depending on what details I want or what Pokemon I want it to represent. So I'm going to be using that pattern with this black knit fabric to create a comfy Umbreon hoodie for this girl to wear with a cute short pleated skirt. She's also going to have long black socks. After cutting out all the pieces and hemming and adding cuffs to some of them, I start sewing them together. I'm still doing it all by hand, still haven't gotten around to practicing much on the sewing machine, but hey, it still works, just slower. Um, after I attach the tops of all the pieces, I then sew along the sleeves and the sides of the hoodie to close it up. Once the main construction of the hoodie is finished, it's onto the details that will transform this from a standard black hoodie into an Umbreon hoodie. Umbreon is going to need its signature yellow circle on the forehead, and I'm also going to put these yellow circles on the elbows of the sleeves. So um, we're gonna put that on the front part of the hood. I'm gluing this piece of yellow fabric together carefully to form the circle shape that I want, sort of like hemming it with the glue. Uh, however, even though I was careful about it, I just don't like the way it turned out. So I decided to use yellow felt instead, which won't need to be hemmed. So I can just cut it into the perfect shape. I made two more to put on the sleeves as well, and then I stitched them on with some matching yellow thread. 
For the ears, I made a little pattern for the whole ear and also a pattern for the little yellow stripe piece. I think I used glue to attach the stripe part and then I sewed the ears together and stuffed them with some fluff. I sewed them closed and then I attached them to the hood by cutting slits in the hood and sewing them inside those holes. Finally, the hoodie is finished. It's really cute and soft. I kind of want to make one for myself. Now to make her some socks. I'm using the same knit fabric. I pin the fabric around her foot and calf and I sew right along the edge of her leg to give it the perfect fit. This works only because the fabric is stretchy, otherwise I wouldn't be able to pull it off and turn it inside out. Then I hem the top edge, I don't know why I didn't do that first actually, <laughs> uh, but then I trim the excess, turn it inside out, and I have some cute little socks. Next, I'm making a pleated skirt out of yellow fabric. I didn't fully know what I was doing here because I had never made a pleated skirt before. I just added like an extra centimeter maybe for each pleat uh, and then I tried to do it mathematically but I failed to calculate that correctly or fold it the right way and I ended up just kind of winging it until it looked good. Uh, I hemmed the edge with some tacky glue first I did the best that I could with the pleats and I pinned them in place before hand sewing. Next, I folded the waistband in half and I sewed the skirt onto the waistband. It's not quite perfect, but I still think it looks really cute, especially with those socks. For her shoes, I had these loafer style shoes, which actually came on Alistair Wonderland. So they're meant for boy dolls, but they actually fit really well with the added bulk of the socks on her feet. I like them a lot because they're actual loafers like you'd see an anime schoolgirl wear with those long socks. I tried out a couple of other options, but none of them went with the aesthetic that I wanted for this doll, so I painted the loafers black and then I glazed them with Liquitex matte varnish. Okay, now let's style her hair and reunite her with her body. First, I'm boil washing her hair by simply pouring hot water over her hair in the sink. It got pretty misshapen in the paper towel, plus monofiber tends to stick out away from the head. I'm going to comb the hair, as you can see me doing kind of awkwardly here, and comb some to the front because I'm going to trim it so that she has bangs or fringe in the front. By the way, the shower gel bottle is just to weigh down the doll stand so it doesn't fall over because if it's not weighed down, it's just gonna fall right over when you pour the water on it. Ooh, she looks pretty scary now, doesn't she? Once that dries, I can cut the hair to form the bangs. I really hate doing this. It's so hard to get it just right. I just went really slowly, kept cutting just a little tiny bit at a time, and kept adjusting it for a long time until I was happy with it. And I think we're just about done. Okay, Raven, ready to transform? Don't worry, magic doesn't hurt. It just tickles a little. Here we go. Aw, hi, Umbreon. Aren't you a cutie?
Little Umbreon girl is already in her new home with Samantha, and I was so happy to hear that she made it to Samantha's house on her actual birthday, which I had no idea about, and just, it happened magically. Um, so she ended up being a birthday present too. How cool is that? I really love Umbreon's hoodie, and I love making hoodies based off of Pokemon. In fact, I've been planning for ages to start my own online shop where you'll be able to purchase similar Pokemon-inspired doll hoodies and dresses. I know I've been saying it for ages, but I think I'm getting much closer to getting it all together to start that maybe by the end of this year, so keep your eyes out for announcements from me if you're interested in owning your own Pokemon-inspired doll clothing made by me. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Get hyped for what's coming. Virgo is the next star sign in my new Pokemon Zodiac series, so make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't so that you won't miss any of the doll magic. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you soon. Bye.